One of the biggest mistakes that we often make as bass anglers starts right here with our hands and rod and reel. Well, in this video, I have synced up footage of what is going on here to what is actually happening under the water. I've got them synced up so you can see them at the same time on a split screen. I used a bright pink five inch stick worm so you can see it on video just on a Texas rig with a 3 16 ounce worm weight. And this reel, it's important to note, is a 6.8 to one, approximately 27 inches of line recovery per turn. And I've actually got down there in the water as well, a piece of conduit that is 37 inches long. So you have something to reference as you're watching this lure move through the water column. My hope is that this video gives us a good idea as anglers what is actually happening down there under the water, especially on those days when the bite is tougher and we don't have as much room for error when we really want to make that very natural looking presentation. Well, let's get started with retrieve number one, and this is the popular nine o'clock to 11 o'clock type of retrieve. We've seen this a lot. Probably all of you have used this retrieve. And when that lure starts to get closer to you, it's doing not what we think it's doing. It pops up off the bottom very quickly, but even more so is it covers so much territory laterally. As you can see against this 37 inch piece of conduit down here, it shoots out of frame really quickly. Now, if you have a really long cast, you got a lot of line out there at the very beginning of that presentation, as you do this type of movement, it's going to maintain bottom contact, but it's not long before it starts to pull up off the bottom. And as you get closer, it's gonna to start to pull up off the bottom a little bit more. And this is one of those retrieves where I really think what we think is going on and what is actually happening, especially as far as speed, the amount of territory covered, is not the same. So if those fish are finicky and it's not an aggressive bite, this is one of those retrieves where we, we really have to be careful because a small movement here makes a huge movement under the water. On to retrieve number two, this is where we are slightly bouncing the lure on a slack line and that slack line makes a huge difference. As you can see right here under the water, the lure has some hops to it, sometimes really small, sometimes a little bigger, but most importantly, it's not moving that far laterally. It's taking some time as it's working across the bottom. It's very easy to make this presentation look natural, to look, look like something actually crawling around there on the bottom. And depending on the amount of slack that you put in there, that lure is gonna either stay right down there on the bottom and just twitch and vibrate some, or have some very, very small hops to it. This is a popular retrieve and it is one that I like to use a lot. Now on to retrieve number three. This once again is using small little twitches of the rod, but on a tight or tighter line. And as you can quickly see, makes a huge difference. That lure just shoots right out of frame really quickly. It bounces off the bottom quite a bit. So the difference in the way the lure looks based on that slack line or a tighter or a taut line is something that we really need to keep in mind. If you're wanting to have a more subtle presentation, do like in retrieve two, keep a lot of slack in that line. If maybe you're trying to get some reaction bites, get them to react well on a tighter line, it's going to have that big pop to it. And before we get to retrieve number four, for those of you that have been waiting, my Bass Behavior Bundle is active. The link is down below. You can go ahead and get signed up. Thank you. Now, retrieve number four is my favorite by far, and I've been using it with all kinds of bottom bouncing presentations, whether it's jigs, Texas rigs, shaky heads, Ned rigs, doesn't matter. I love it. And that is just a straight reel with the rod tip down. As you can see, it makes great bottom contact. You can feel everything that is going on down there, what type of bottom composition it is, and it telegraphs the bites really well because you don't have much slack in that line. As you can see with this steady reeling action, it looks very lifelike crawling along the bottom. Now keep in mind, this is a 6.8 to one reel. If you had a higher speed reel, you're gonna have to consciously slow yourself down more, which is why I like to use 
this one. It only has that 27 inches of line recovery per turn approximately. But this is a retrieve that I have really started to rely on and you can see why. Now retrieve number five is basically the same with that straight reel, but look at the rod tip. I just have the rod tip up slightly and look at the difference that makes. It scoots the lure up off of the bottom. Now once again, like with retrieve number one, if you've got a lot of line out there and you've got a long cast, that lure is going to stay down to the bottom. But it doesn't take long till you get to that point in the retrieve where it's going to start slipping up off the bottom and then dropping back down. So really keep that in mind that that rod tip positioning, which doesn't seem like much of a difference to us where it's elevated slightly to pointing down towards the water makes a huge difference on how the lure responds, especially as you get it closer to you. And hey, if you'd like to watch a video that shows how the popular jig minnow looks under the water with several different retrieves, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For The Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.